Hey guys, this is going to be part 3 in my new video series on how to solve cuboids, and today we're talking about the 3x3x4. Now, to be able to solve this cube, you really only need to know how to solve a 3x3x2, but it will help to also know how to solve a regular 3x3, a 3x3x4, and probably the 3x3x1, just so that you can have an understanding of how all this stuff works, but you do not really need them. All you really need to know is how to solve a 3 by 3 by 2 So, I have those videos, or I have the videos for the other cuboids if you need to watch them, and let's jump right in. Alright, so it's sufficiently scrambled now. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that this is not a shape-shifting puzzle because you cannot turn one of these long sides 180 de or 90 degrees and then turn it. It doesn't line up. So again, any R, if you hold it like this so that it's vertical, any R turns, L turns, F turns, and B turns are all going to be 2 instead of 1. I'm just not going to say it because it would take too much time. So the first step is that you're going to solve one of the two 2x3x3s. Two by two, two by and how you're going to think about this is that this section right here in the middle this, these two layers act as one 3x3x2. Three by three by and then these two layers, the top and the bottom one, that acts as one other 3x3x2. Three by three by so you just want to solve them individually. I have found that it's easiest to start with the middle two. So that's what we're going to do today. So the first step is that I usually hold it so the white side is on the bottom, just because that's the side I do first. And you're going to want to solve this uh, first layer here. And so you're going to look around, and I know that well, blue is here, and I know that if red's on the or white's here and blue's here, this needs to be red. But it's not. It's orange. So this is the blue. So this is blue, and red needs to be here. So I'm going to rotate this red one over that spot and bring it down. So now I have blue and red. And now I know that this side over here needs to be orange, but it's not. So I'm going to rotate an orange over there and flip it down in. So now I have the blue, the red, and the orange. And now this one needs to be green, and it already is. So that's fantastic. It's just like solving the first two layers on a 3x3x2. Three by three by so now we're going to solve the first layer corners, and you're going to use the algorithms from the 3x3x2 three by three by to do that. So I'm going to look for a piece that is above where it needs to go. And now because there's two different pieces in this and you can't look at the top color to see what they need to be, um, one thing that helps is that when you have the piece that goes in the first layer above the spot where it's supposed to go and up in the second layer like this is here, see this is a blue and orange one and it's above the orange and blue spot, then the colors are going to be opposite. The blue piece is going to be on the orange side and the orange piece is going to be on the blue side. Otherwise, if you have them up here and it's their match up, when you put them in the bottom layer, it'll look like this where they're switched because as it gets dropped down into this layer, it flips around. So it just it needs to be backwards. And so once this is in here, you're going to put it in the top front right and do the algorithm from the 3x3x2, three by three by which is R, U, and in this case, the U I'm doing is like a U star because this is the piece I'm working with, so it's a U. So R, U, R, U prime, R. And that put that piece in place. Now, since you know how to solve a 3x3x2, three by three by you just proceed through solving the rest of the four corners, or the other three corners for the first layer, like a 3x3x2. Three by three by and now you've got that first layer of that little 2x2 two two solved. And so now you do the second layer. You look for any edges that line up, and I have these two orange, or the, any corners that line up, and I have these two orange ones, so I'm going to put them on the left side and do the algorithm that we learned for the 3x3x2, three by three by which is R, U, R, U prime, R, cube turn like a U prime, R, U prime, R, U, R. Now, that algorithm is going to get tweaked a little bit later, but we'll see. And then I'm just going to use the, cent the edge switching algorithms from the 3x3x2 three by three by to fix all these edges. At this point, it is just like solving a 3x3x2, three by three by so you should not need any real help with this part because you're using algorithms from the 3x3x2. Three by three by Alright, so now you have the first, the middle 2x3x3 by three by three solved. That whole thing is solved, and the rest of it is not. So now we're going to work on the outer two. Now, before we start this, the thing to keep in mind is that 
when you turn the layers to move these pieces around, you see you messed up that part of the regular 3x3x2 three three because these are switched and these are switched. So what you want to do is you want, now the only, in the method that I use, really the only time you turn any of the long sides is when you do an R turn. You don't do an F, you don't do an L, you don't really do a V, you just do R's. So to keep this messing it up for me a problem because pretty soon you could have the whole cube messed up if you do an R and then you turn that side and now you've just got that whole part that you already solved messed up and you don't want that. So to keep that from happening, pick one color and always have that on the right. So in this case, I'm going to pick blue. So I'm always going to have that in my right hand. So now when I do algorithms, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if I need to do the cube from a different angle, I'm going to move everything. So or the, the top two and bottom two layers. So say I've got a piece here and the notch it needs to go in is down here. I'm going to rotate those two layers to put it on the right hand side on the front for me so that I can, so the only R turns I'm doing are on this blue face. Now I'll explain what that looks like once we get more into it. So first you're going to look at the cross. I've got red here, I've got white and red here, and white and blue here, but that's not where they're supposed to go. As you can see, the red side's matched up, but the blue side's not. So what I'm going to do is since I picked the blue side to be my turn side, I'm going to put that blue and white piece on the blue side, flip it up out of the way. Then I'm going to turn the bottom layer so that the red lines up again, and then I'm going to turn the blue side down so that now the blue side lines up and the red side lines up. For the green side, which is right here, I'm going to put it on the blue side and then rotate the bottom layer twice so that this is where the blue, the green is supposed to go opposite the blue and it's on the blue side where the green piece is. So I'm going to flip it, put it down. That way when I rotate the bottom layer back to where it's supposed to be, all of it lines up. And I've still only been turning the blue side, so that'll help later. Finally, I'm going to put the orange one on that blue side. So hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to rotate the bottom layer so that the notch where the orange one is supposed to go is on the blue side too, so that I can flip it down and restore it, and now I've got the cross. Now to do the edges, you want to find an edge in the top layer that has white. I've got one right here. I don't know if you can see that. The shadow is a little weird. It's got white, white, green, and orange. So it needs to go above the notch that it's above, right here, the white, green, and orange notch. But I can't do anything with that without turning either the green side or the orange side. Now I only need to turn the blue side. So I'm going to rotate the whole thing, the top layer and the bottom layer, so that from my perspective, the piece right here and the notch right here where it needs to go are all on the blue face so that I can do the algorithm by only turning the blue side. R, U, R, U prime R. And then I just need to rotate this bottom layer back, and everything is dandy. So proceed as normal doing that by making sure that you put everything so that you can only be turning the blue side. Um, and so from your perspective, it'll be on the front, right, top, and bottom of those pieces that you're going to be working with. So that way, <clears throat> you don't get the whole middle part of the cube all screwed up. You might have that one blue side switched, but that's okay. We can fix that at the end. We just don't want to have a whole bunch of sides that are all messed up. So I've got the first layer solved here. So now, like on a 3x3x2, three three I'm going to keep blue on my right and proceed with solving the uh, corners on the top. So it looks like I have two that are matched up, the red and red, and I don't have any others that are matched up. So with the blue on my right side, I'm going to rotate the top layer so that the red ends up being on my left so that I can do the algorithm. Now this one is going to be a little tricky, so just slow down and pay, or do, watch this one, do this one with me. You're going to do R, U, R, U prime, R like normal. But at this point you would usually turn the whole thing like a U prime. Do not do that right now. If you do that, you will have the orange on the right hand side. Sometimes that won't be a problem, but sometimes it will. And so we're just trying to make it easy and keeping one side on the right. So that's what we're going to do. So instead of turning the whole cube like a U prime turn, turn the top and bottom layers like a U prime turn.
That will effectively turn the 3x3x2 cuboid that you're working with the way you're supposed to, but then keep the rest of the cube the way it's supposed to be. So now proceed with the second half of the algorithm, r, u prime r, u r, and then you just have to turn the top layer and the bottom layer back, and now everything lines back up. It's great. And you didn't have to turn another side, which is also nice. And so I've got my corners flipped, so I'm going to use the algorithms from the 3 by 3 by 2 to fix the edges. But again, I'm going to, I see I've got a case of two adjacent edges switched, but I'm going to turn them so that I can have them in the front and on the right hand side and still have blue on the right. That way, when I'm turning, I'm only turning blue and I'm not messing anything else up. Okay? And now I've got it solved. So that wasn't really too bad. You just got to keep in mind that when you're turning it, <clears throat> when you're solving it, you want to have one side be your turn side and only ever turn that side. But it's not too hard, and you'll get the hang of it once you get it. But we're not quite done yet. There is a case of parity that this can get that I did not get in that solve. So I'm going to get the cube into parity so that I can show you guys how to fix it. Okay, so here's that case of parity. What would have happened is that as you're solving it, pretend that red was my side to turn, my turn side. I've got everything else solved, but because of the algorithms I had to do, I had to do an odd number of R turns when I'm solving the second 3 by 3 by 2 the top and the bottom 3 by 3 by 2 And so that left this red side flipped, not the top layer because that was what I was solving, but the middle layer, the part I'd already solved, it got that flip. And so what I used to do was to turn the whole layer so that it lined the middle layer up, and then use 5 by 5 algorithms to fix these acting as if this whole thing was an edge group on a 5x5. Five five. This was the center piece, and each of these were the wing pieces. And so I would do the algorithm to switch these two, and then do the algorithm to switch these two, and then do the algorithm to flip these, and do the algorithm to flip these. And it was just a mess. But I found the new algorithm that's way better. So from this position where you have everything solved, but that one layer is flipped, you hold it so that the side that is flipped, in this case the red side, is on the front so that you have a piece on the left and a piece on the right that are switched. For, so from your perspective viewer it would look like this where you have messed up and messed up. And so what you're going to want to do, and I'm going to try and do this from your perspective, the algorithm is 2 U star or 2 big U, the top two layers, 2 R, 2 F, 2 little u, that's the second layer in, um, 2F, 2R, and 2U. And that algorithm fixes that parity and keeps everything restored, and you have just solved the 3 by 3 by 4 I realize this may have been a drawn-on video, and I may not have explained it as good as I could have, but the main thing you need to know is just how to solve the 3 by 3 by 2 to keep one side on the turn, one side being your turning side at all times, and then that algorithm at the end to fix the parity that you can get from that. Other than that, it'll just take practice getting used to how an oblong cube like this feels and how to think about cuboids, because the mental geography you have to think about is totally different than that of a 3x3. So it's important to know how to think about it. And other than that, you should be set up, and this is one of my favorite cuboids to solve. I really, really love it. It's a lot of fun, and... I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.